So we've already looked at air electric dipoles and their associated electric fields. But just as a reminder, an electric dipole consists of two equal and opposite charges, plus Q and minus Q, separated by a distance d. We can imagine them as joined by a bond, a chemical bond, along the axis between them. Now physicists find it useful to define an electric dipole moment. This is given through the equation P is equal to QD, where P stands for the electric dipole moment and is a vector, Q is the charge and D is the distance between the two molecules making up the dipole, sorry the two charges making up the dipole. Now P is a vector so it has a direction and the direction is taken as being from the negative Q to the positive Q. So just be careful not to get this P confused with the P that we use for momentum. Unfortunately, physicists aren't, don't seem to choose different letters for everything. Now, electric dipole moments can be permanent or induced. So polar molecules have a permanent dipole molecule because they've got a positive end and a negative end. So for example, consider the water molecule. The water molecule has the oxygen and it's got two hydrogens and there's bonds between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Now the oxygen attracts the electrons more strongly than the hydrogen does. So in that bond, the electrons are usually found closer to the oxygen than they are to the hydrogen. So this means the oxygen is slightly negative while the hydrogens are slightly positive. So because it's got a positive end and a negative end, it has got an electric dipole. Now if we imagine placing a nonpolar molecule into a electric field, the electric field exerts a force on the electrons which are making up the bond. So the force on the electrons, because they're negative, will actually be in the opposite direction to the electric field. So the electrons in that bond will move a little under the influence of that force and that will give the originally nonpolar molecule a positive end and a negative end which will mean that it also has an electric dipole moment. So let's go back to considering our simple dipole where we've got a positive charge and a negative charge which is separated by a distance d. Let's imagine placing this dipole into a uniform electric field. Now in this case there is a force acting upon the positive charge up here and that force is given by EQ and is in the same direction as the electric field. There's also a force on the negative charge down here which also has a magnitude EQ but in this case, because it's a negative charge, it's in the direction opposite to the electric field. So we've got equal and opposite forces acting upon the positive and negative end of our dipole. So this tells us that there's no net force on a dipole placed in a uniform electric field. However, there is a net torque. So there's a net torque because these forces are acting at different points on our dipole. So remember torque is given by the vector equation torque is equal to R cross F where R is the vector going from the pivot point to the place where the force is applied and F is the force. So if we consider the torque acting upon our positive charge, the distance between the pivot point and the place the force is applied is d over 2. The magnitude of the force is given by eq and so the torque is given by the torque on the positive particle is equal to d over 2 eq sine theta where theta is the angle between the bond axis and the electric field. Now in this case that torque is making the particle turn this way in a clockwise direction. Now if we consider the torque on the negative particle it is also given by d over 2 eq sine theta and it is also making the dipole rotate in the same direction in the clockwise direction. And so we can say that the net torque is equal to the torque on the positive particle plus the torque on the negative particle. And because those are acting in the same direction, they just sum together. And we end up with this is equal to DEQ sine theta, which as a vector equation, remembering that the dipole moment is given 
by D times Q. We can write this as P cross E. And in this case, it's making it rotate in a clockwise direction. So this torque is into the screen. Now, as we rotate a dipole in an electric field, we do need to do work on it. So this is telling us that there is a potential energy associated with having a torque in an electric field. So in order to calculate this potential energy, we can use that the potential energy U is equal to the negative of the electrostatic work done, which is the work done by the field, so minus W. And this is equal to minus the integral of the torque, which is a vector, when we take the dot product of the torque with the angle d theta. Now the angle d theta in this case is also a vector. And to understand the signs properly, we're going to have to have a bit of a think about what we mean by that vector d theta. So the vector d theta actually comes from when we think about arcs. So we know that an arc length s is equal to r times theta. So we can actually write down the vector equation to describe a vector along the arc length ds is equal to d theta cross r. So the direction of ds is in the angle of increasing theta. So this is in an anti-clockwise direction and r goes from the center of the circle to that element of arc length. And so using our right hand rule, we can see that d theta in this case is going to have to be out of the screen. So when we've got our equation the for the dot product of the torque with the angle d theta, the torque and d theta are in opposite directions. The torque is into the screen while d theta is out of the screen. So taking that into account, we can see that this is going to be equal to the integral of torque d theta without that dot product there. So the negative signs will cancel each other out. And so to get the work when we change from some initial angle to some final angle, we can put limits on our integral from the initial angle to the th final angle. And whenever we're talking about potential energies, we always choose a zero point. So by convention, when we place a, an electric dipole into an electric field, we take the zero point as when the dipole axis makes an angle of 90 degrees with the electric field. So let's put the limits on our integral as going from 90 degrees up to theta. And then we've seen that the expression for the torque is given by P cross E, which we can write as PE sine theta. So we're doing the integral from 90 to theta of PE sine theta d theta. When we integrate sine theta, we end up with minus cos theta. So this is equal to PE times minus cos theta, and then we evaluate at the limits 90 and theta. So this will be equal to minus PE cos theta, as we know that cos of 90 is zero. So we can write minus PE cos theta as minus P dot E. So this gives us the expression for the potential energy of a dipole placed in an electric field. So let's have a look at an example problem now. So the problem is, how much electrostatic work does it take to turn a dipole with a moment of P equals 3.2 times 10 to the minus 25 coulombs per meter in a uniform field E equals 50 newtons per coulomb from theta equals 70 degrees to theta equals 40 degrees? What is the change in potential energy? So let's start this one like we usually do by drawing a diagram. So here is our electric field. And it has a magnitude of 50 newtons per coulomb. And then we've got a dipole which is initially at 70 degrees. So this initial angle in here is 70 degrees. 
and then it turns around to 40 degrees. So it's becoming more aligned with the field. So we know that the work done, the electrostatic work done, is equal to the integral from the initial angle to the final angle of the torque with respect to theta. And these are both vectors. But as we discussed, the torque and d theta are in opposite directions. So this is equal to minus the integral from 70 to 40 of torque d theta. And we know that the torque is given by PE sine theta. So we can write the work done is equal to minus the integral from 70 to 40 of PE sine theta d theta. And so this is equal to minus PE. And then when we integrate sine theta, we get minus cos theta. And this is from 70 to 40. So these negative signs are going to cancel out and we'll have P cos theta. So we can say this is P, which is 3.2 times 10 to the minus 25 times E, which is 50 times cos of 40 minus cos of 70. And we can solve this on the calculator and we end up with 6.8 times 10 to the minus 24 joules. So we're then asked what is the change in potential energy and we know that the change in potential energy is the negative of the electrostatic work. So this is going to be equal to minus 6.8 times 10 to the minus 24 joules. Now we should just check that this is what we'd expect. We'd expect that as it becomes more aligned with the field, it's losing potential energy. So we would expect a negative answer for this one like we have.